Last time out of Rise of we had just been given our youth intake by Stan of the Age. And now, it's the 26th of May. So, two months have passed. We have finished the season, our first year at Stan of the Age. And we have a chance to win the league after missing out on the cup this season. So, have we done ourselves justice? Have we managed to win the Jupiter Pro League for the first time in many, many years at Standard Liège. Let's find out together, shall we? Our first game after the youth intake came and went, and Club Brujo managed to beat us 4-0 after we went down to 10 men inside 19 minutes, and they absolutely decimated us, and it was the biggest defeat I can remember having in a very long time, if not ever. So, to lose against one of our big rivals... By four goals to nil because the red card was not great and it made me question a few things at the team so hopefully we can do better in the next match right especially since this was very important for our chances of winning the league then we took a Sackley Brugger and drew 2-2 two -two. not ideal our first championship group game being a 2-2 two -two draw against Sackley Brugger and I genuinely thought we could do better than this, but apparently we couldn't. And despite coming back to equalize twice, we couldn't get the winning goal, despite having the better stats in the match. So, what on earth are we doing? And then things have made even worse when we took on Kent and lost 1-0 at home to them. No idea why we decided to lose this game, but we did. And that's two defeats in the last three matches in the league. And... Just one point in the first two matches of the championship group. So we have to surely improve our fortunes, right? Because this cannot continue. We need to win our next match or things are going to go badly. Well, things didn't get better because we lost 1-0 to Club Brugge again. And despite the fact they were down to 10 men for 40 minutes. Hmm. Yeah, this wasn't our best moment, was it? We absolutely needed to do better than this, and we've lost to them twice in the last four matches, and we have lost three of the last four matches, and we have gotten just a single point in that time. Something tells me this is not going to go to plan for our chances of winning the league, and we might just blow it with this result. But I guess we've got, what, another seven games left in the league to try and turn it around? Unisa Galois or Unisa Galois was our next opponent and we beat them 3-0 for our first win of the championship group and took a bit longer than I wanted to take to get the first win but we got the win either way and at least we're winning at last. It took too long, too long to get the opening win but we finally get all three points and that's perfect. We need to do this earlier, we need to do this more often and not screw things up so much please. Thank you. If the last result looks good, then this 4-0 win is Andalit was even better. We've absolutely dominated them. And I was delighted with the fact we got a 4-0 win in the Classic Derby. So, another victory to our collection. And one that we'll cherish for a very long time. We then took on Sakli Brugger and got revenge. We beat them 2-0 this time. And we feel a lot better as a result. So, hopefully those two wins in the last two matches is the turning point for our season and a turning point for our title charge if we can keep up the pace of course well we took on Hent and beat them to not their ground so yes our title challenge can continue we've beaten every team it feels like in the top six this year and i just need to do this more often because i don't like the fact that we keep dropping points stupidly and they'll feel a bit annoyed that they didn't win this because we actually were not the better team in this match. So I'll take it either way. And then we did what we should have done in the last two games against them. We beat Club Brugge by two goals to one. And we're actually beating them, which is better than nothing. Yes, it doesn't take away the bitter taste of defeat in that 4-0 defeat out of my mouth. But we beat them 2-1. We've got to win against a team that is expected to be champions. I'm happy either way. And then we took on Unisa Galleries and lost by three goals to one to kill off any chances of doing well. Yeah, this is terrible. I hate this ground. I really do. I always lose here. I don't know why. But yeah, I've got nothing to say. I've literally got no positive to say about this game. We were terrible. We deserve to lose. And they have our number here. And I wish I knew why. At least we finished off the championship group with another win over Anderlet and completed the championship group double over them so 
There's that, I suppose. Oh, if only we had not lost so many games in the championship group. But a win's a win. All three points have obtained, and we finished off with style. But still, despite the thing, after finishing second place in the regular season, we could only get second place in the normal season. In fact, Club Brugge were 10 points ahead of us in the regular season. We ended up finishing 10 points behind them in the championship group. So we did make a difference. And that's great. It, it's not great. It, it's actually annoying. But it's great that we didn't actually lose ground, I suppose, in one regards. But at the same time, I actually wanted to close the gap. So there's that. Also, they only drew one match all year. They won 34 times. Normally, if it wasn't for the split, that would be at 103 points in a 40-game season. How on earth are we meant to compete with that? I mean, we won 28 times, to be fair, so we did actually do quite well. But, oh, that is not a good season. The fact that's so good is going to be some undertaking to try and, and win this league from them and to end their reign of dominance and terror. We need them to have a bad season more than anything else. I think any other year, we're probably winning this league. In fact, let's double check this now. I'm curious now to see if any other year, not that I care about that, that we would actually won the league. So, 54 points. Miss up our two points. We might have actually won the league that year. Miss up our single point. We would have won that year. So, okay. 54 points is not a bad total. They just had an outstanding year. And, um, hmm. Let's compare everything here. 71 points. So they, they literally had 8 more points this year than last year. 71 points was Anderlecht. So Club Brugge had 65 points. 70 points. 71, 70. Wow. Okay. So that was when they had 4 more games than the record apart. So there's that. But And there's also 2 less teams. Why is there 2 less teams? Okay. So what I'm figuring out here is that they just had a really good year. By their own standards and um 65 points is enough to win that league phase so we were lucky we got 69 points they just had an outstanding season we had a good year ourselves and we were just very unlucky not to have won the league with 55 points because we would have actually caught them if it wasn't in the regular season otherwise so 55 points isn't enough we need to get to 56 points but we've got the most points so far out of all the teams challenging for them in this competition. That's promising, to say the least, that we got Champions League football. We did really well. Club Brugge were just really good this year. And the fact they won their first 14 league games of the year absolutely was what did them in and what helped them win the league this year. So our slow start to the year, their really good start to the year, is enough to completely make sure that we could not catch them. Which is a shame. That being said, let's review the season and go over everything that's happened. So what I did, these are all my signs effectively. So Popper was the player of the year, the sign of the year. Don't know why. He was the one with the lowest average rating, but there you go. I think we did quite well, quite frankly, to get all these signings in. And I think that we have made some good signings this year. Yes, there were some misses potentially. I say that. No one's really a miss. It's just really nice to have this opportunity to do well. So transfers out. This is where we made our business so far. So we made about 35, 36 million this year in transfers out. So that's good. We're making our money there. We need to make that money yet as well. Ohio knocked us out of the Crockett Cup. So that's already a disappointing season as far as I'm concerned. Even though he got 12 goals and had a terrible rating, he failed because he knocked me out of the Cup. But yeah, we finished second place in the league. In both the regular season and the championship group season. So we're in the Champions League this year. Which as far as I'm concerned is perfect. Vestal actually got relegated in the end. So that makes it the fit gets, that makes our defeat gets them all the more disappointing. If we look at this and go through some periods. So September, no wins. We then won 10 in a row. And then we won 4 in a row here after losing to Hent. And then we got 4 games without a win. If we take away those 2 periods where we don't win for... A period of time we could have closed the gap in both phases so that's 10 points dropped there that is six points dropped there and i just i'm just frustrated by the fact that we were 
calls out. Sorry, seven points dropped there. So we are dropping points unnecessarily stupidly. And the fact we won 10 games in a row and we still ended up being in a position where it just didn't go right for us is annoying. But at least we didn't do terribly. I will say the fact that we got knocked out in this phase by a lack of loss was disappointing in the Europa Conference League. But we've got the Champions League football next year in the third quarter of round. So we'll have to see how that goes, I think. Moments to remember, biggest win, 5-0 against Panathinaikos, which says a lot. The match to remember was the 4 win away from home against Antwerp, which wasn't even mine. Parisa was the man with the goal of this year. I'm not going to show it. Even though it was a good goal, I sold him. So... I'm not going to show a goal of hers and I sold. I'm petty like that. Finances, we're actually doing well with sponsorship money, so that's great. Finances, we're looking good. We did apparently lose about one and a half million in broadcast revenue, but honestly, we've done quite well otherwise, and I don't care if I'm going to be honest with you, so there you go. And all this is looking promising to sell at least. Fun fact, I'm looking to sell at least two of these people, so... That's going to be awkward for next year, isn't it? How light it was this? A 4-3-3. It worked. And the players I've got in, Ivanovic was probably my favourite signing just because of what he did for me. And yeah, there's only two players that didn't get a 7.0 rating, so there's that. And it could have been worse. Jubanski was really good this year, and I'm happy with his signing, even if it was my most expensive signing ever in one go. Aquiles, Gunnar was the player of the season. Ivanovic was a young player this season. Popper was the signing this season. Parisa with the goal of the year. Bielsma got 17 goals in all competitions. Donnell got the most assists and the most player match awards. And Esquivel got the highest average rating with Ngoy, of all people, having the most passes per 90, which is really strange to say the least. History in the making, absolutely nothing of note, apparently. So there you go. And this is the interesting part, since we're now here. We're going to go to the forest green. Yes, I count the forest green because it's where I started the season. I left... On the 4th of August, so I've not been here for an entire year yet. And I did some things. So, there you go. Apparently, I brought someone back to Centre Liège in Patrick Elsenman, which is interesting. And Ivanovic, with my 4.4 million son of him, is investing potential. He's really good. So, we made a lot of signings and a lot of sales. We gained 36 million sales and 14.25 million pounds we spent in spending. The 4 the Vegas Club Brugge was the biggest humiliation of the season while beating our bit of rivals by four goals and it was the biggest high point so there you go also reason we're back man united won the europa Conference league and that's why the review happened so we'll be back to see who went down at the end of the year and if the team in the relegation playoff actually did survive or not so there you go the first thing first we are looking at this i now know fluent dutch so we've got that under our repertoire I know basic French as well. I should also talk about my former clubs, which is why we're also here. Great news! Forest Green survived in the first season of the championship, so my signs actually did great things for them, I think. They did sign some more players after I left, to be fair to them, but I'm just happy they have survived, quite frankly. They brought in Jordan Williams on some good fees, 1.1 million apparently. He's now worth between 2.3 and 4.9 million. Jude Sunat Bell is on loan from Tottenham, so that's good business for their point of view. He's really quick. They bought in Adam Buxer on a free transfer, I believe. So there you go. Free transfer. He's worth between 1 million and 10.5 million pounds as a 30 year old. So I doubt they'll make their money back, but it's really good either way. They also brought in Lino Sousa on loan from Arsenal. And it's actually someone I'm looking at potentially bringing to us at Stella of the Age next year. So that'll be interesting because he could be bought by us on a free transfer because he's not going to be renewing his contract apparently. So that's useful. And also potentially a leading player for our division. Admittedly, Greg Taylor would be in his way. So I don't think I will do that potentially, honestly. They also brought in Michael Golding on loan from West Ham. He didn't really start for them, but they didn't need him to start because apparently he's done well enough that he's helped them stay up. So there you go. Brackley Town Fierce in 11th place in the National League North. So they have survived. They're stabilizing themselves as a top half team in this division. I think that's worse than last year, though, which is a bit awkward. Indeed, it is. They actually finished three places loaded on last year. 
and have actually gotten 11 points less than last year as well. So a bit awkward that actually. As far as league, Bearshot did survive. They actually won the European playoff in the end by three goals to nil against RWDM. So they're comfortably safe and I have no idea what's going to happen anymore. That being said, some jobs have come up. I'm not moving, but I thought you'd be interested if you were to see what jobs have come up. So these jobs are currently available and I don't plan on going anywhere. But I just thought it was interesting to show you guys some of the jobs that are currently available. Including an international management job, which I won't do for the life of me. At least not yet. I feel like I need to get some more club football under my belt first before I do anything else. But I know some of you are going to be interested in the bigger jobs. Lesser, I could realistically go for, but I don't want to right now. It makes no sense for me to go from Champions League football to Leicester. No offense to Leicester. Man United is possible. I also don't feel like I should go for Manchester United or Tottenham. Even if both teams are in competitions, I do need to win. Man United being in the conference again is a bit ironic and annoying, but what can you do? Dortmund, though, that's an interesting one. Again, I don't think I can justify it right now because of my reputation not being big enough, but it's interesting that's a possibility. That being said, you know, it's actually in the Europa League, so it's Everton in the Conference League. That is a bit more realistic for me to try and break down if we fall down to the Europa Conference League, if we lose in two competitions. That being said, Brighton, Champions League football, well done to them. They're finishing fifth. Nice to see they're actually doing good things in this save, unlike in other saves I've seen. They've got the Argentina manager, haven't they? Yeah, he's still there. He's won the FA Cup with them too, so they actually won trophies as well, so fair enough. But yeah, interesting jobs that are coming up, and I think it's just fascinating to find all these opportunities that could go our way, or everyone else's way. Dortmund are in the Conference League, so if I was to try it, Dortmund would probably be one of the places I would go to first. Quarter first, so six points in 34 matches. That must be a record low, surely. It is. That's a record low. Unbelievably bad season. Also, I've got some money to play with this season. 15.76 million to play with. I did have 19 million, but I've spent some of that money already. And I spent 3.6 million of that to bring in Nelson permanently after a successful loan spell with us. So he was happy to sign for us because he likes me as a manager, so that's great. And the idea we can get him on a permanent basis was really, really good. So I'm delighted we got him. He's happy to join. And as far as I'm concerned, we've done well for ourselves. We're paying just 3.6 million for his signature. We're paying 18 grand a week though for his wages. And my background staff think he could be a star player for the future. He's a lean player right now, so he's exciting. Really exciting. Also, he's in the middle of Dream 11. So as far as I'm concerned, that just justified the signature even more, really. That being said, I'm not going to go and try and get Esquivel on a permanent basis. I've got players I think we could work with already. And even though he was really good this year with a 7.23 average rating, I feel like he may ask for 20 grand. I don't want to spend 20 grand on him if I'm, if I'm honest with you. He's already on 24 grand as it is. So as far as I'm concerned, that's not worth the justification of bringing him in. And also, I can probably get free transfers if I'm honest with you. So... I have to look at that long term and think, what can I do to improve the squad that isn't going to bankrupt the club? I'm saying that even though I am making Nissan the highest earner at the club with 18 grand and we're paying 16 grand to a couple of players. I have to look at to move on some of these players already. So that's why potentially this could be a busy, busy transfer window and a busy summer this year. That being said, next year... The board won a top three finish, which is great. We did that last year. The fans won a top six finish and to finish above all our rivals. Well, to finish above Shadowa and Genk. And to be competitive with Club Brugge and Andelect. What I'm going to do is end this here. I hope you guys have enjoyed yourselves. I hope you guys will like and share this video and that you subscribe to the channel. It really does help me out a lot. Do you think we can aim for the title this year or the cup? We need to get one of those two things before we want to move on because I refuse to leave until I get a trophy. So there you go. Either way though, until next time, goodbye and well, good night.